So we started out by playing with twisting our torso to move our arms horizontally, using our shoulder muscles to move our arms vertically, and adding those together, torso twist plus shoulder lifting, to actually create smooth circles with our whole body. Rather than standing here rigid and just using our shoulder muscles like this. And we basically played with that with all four modes of timing and direction. So here we have together time, same direction, facing one wall, but we could also play with split time, opposite direction. Then, if we turn and face down the corridor, we have split time, same direction. Same thing is going on in all of these. Torso twisting is helping to move your arms out to the horizon. Your shoulder muscles are helping your arms move high and low. And then finally, also in the corridor, we have together time, opposite direction. Key points to focus on if you're imagining a giant clock. You want to make sure you're symmetrically hitting all four of your cardinal points. As we're doing this, we're being aware of the center line of the body. You don't want one arm over here, over this shoulder, and one arm down here, under this shoulder, which aren't aligned on that center line. If you do this, this hand is going to get here much quicker than that hand did. So you want to make sure your arms are always aligned on the center line of your body so that they can travel to the next point at the same time. As I'm doing this, I'm, I'm moving from this position by twisting my torso, pointing the center line of my body to the next point I want to move towards, and that automatically starts to direct my arms there. As I separate my arms, I'm keeping them aligned on the center line of my body, and turning my body to get to the next points. And in some way or another, that's going to work for all of the modes. For instance, here, when we're moving in together time uh, opposite, as I'm lifting up, most of, most of the, the movement across the top part of the circle comes from me turning my torso, moving my shoulders, causing my arms to move past each other. And then, then my arm muscles drop down to the horizon. As I drop from the horizon down to the hips, it's the same thing. I'm twisting my torso, which moves my hands past my hips. Then I'm lifting up to the horizon. The other key points are that when we're working on two different planes, oh wait, who wants to be assistant? So, <laughs> when, we're, when we're working in in the hallway, in wheel plane, and we want to have each arm on a different plane, it's useful to work with another person or like an inanimate object to make sure you're not swinging your planes in someplace where they shouldn't be. So I'm still twisting my torso to create this movement, but I'm making sure that I adjust my arm position so that I'm never actually reaching in here and bumping into cheese. It's pretty easy to do that without someone in front of you, but because we don't have as much awareness of what's behind us, it's really useful when someone or something is behind you so that you can check and make sure that you're not turning too far. <laughs> don't want to turn too far. <laughs> then, after playing with inert modes with the arms and appropriate alignment, uh, we talk about footwork. Footwork's pretty easy. To walk that way using half turns, I can do so by making front side turns, front side half turns with each foot. Not only am I walking in a particular direction, but I'm turning my body, body pivoting on my heel or ball of my foot. And I can also walk backwards by making backside turns. With poi, this is going to allow me to 
move around and play with different movement while walking and moving around a stage or while continuing to turn. To continue to turn, essentially what you're doing is combining a front side half turn with a back side half turn. You may become dizzy if you do that, so it's useful to spot something that you're moving towards. So for instance, I'll pick a point on the wall, and as I'm uh, pirouetting towards it, I'm trying to look at it as much as I can, and when I have to make my backside turn, I'm going to spot it as quickly as I can and keep focused on it until I'm forced Then if you get dizzy from a lot of pirouettes, as long as you keep yourself upright, keep your chin upright, uh, and spin around a few times in the opposite direction uh, that you've been pirouetting, that will really help to get rid of most of the dizziness very quickly.